today we're going to talk about how to count atoms in a chemical formula. So we're going to start with the full sheet of paper. This is actually going to be a foldable by the end of class, but we're going to fill it all out, do some practice, and then we will cut and glue the pieces together to make the foldable. In the very middle, you'll see an example of a chemical formula. We see C5H12. Now we've been talking about the difference between elements and compounds. This is a compound because we see two different elements. Remember, elements are represented um, by chemical symbols on the periodic table. So the C is actually representing carbon. The H is representing hydrogen. These are elements, but when two or more elements are combined, we get a compound. So here we have C5H12, which is actually a compound called pentane. What we're going to talk about is how to count the number of atoms, how many carbon atoms are in this formula, and how many hydrogen atoms are in this formula. So the number that's going to tell us that, one of the numbers, is called a subscript. So the word sub, the prefix sub, means below, like a subway is an underground train, right? So see how these numbers are a little bit below the normal line where the C and the H are. That is called a subscript. It says these are the small numbers found to the right of each element. A subscript tells how many of each element is in the compound. So we're going to fill that in. A subscript tells how many of each element is in the compound. And technically that's how many atoms. So here we're saying there are five carbon atoms and there are 12 hydrogen atoms. This um, diagram of the compound you can count them, okay? The black ones are representing the C, the carbon. There's one, two, three, four, five. The white ones are representing the hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. On a compound that's a little bit smaller, that's easy to count, but as compounds get more complex and we look at different chemical formulas and chemical equations, it's going to be much easier to just use the subscript. The subscript is going to tell us how many atoms are of each element are in the compound. If there is no number, then we just assume that the subscript is 1. So if there's no number, the subscript is 1. There's also a note down here that says you cannot change the subscripts so because that changes the compound. Yesterday in your reading, there was an example of O2 compared to O3. O2, just two atoms of oxygen combined, make the oxygen gas that we need and breathe every day. But if you added a third oxygen atom and made O3, that's actually something called ozone, and that's a completely different substance. So when we're looking at chemical formulas, we're not going to change the subscripts, it's got to be whatever is listed there. Okay, I want you to find the page, it's a small page, that says more practice, and it's the one that says identify the subscripts in each compound below. Zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so we're going to start with looking at NaCl. I don't see a subscript next to Na, so we said that would just be 1. Same thing for Cl. There's not a subscript to the bottom right. Sorry, that's out of focus. There we go. So that is also going to be 1. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. Remember, the N and A go together because the A is lowercase. When we're looking for elements in a chemical formula, like which elements are here, the lowercase letter always has to go with the uppercase letter. So really, we're looking for uppercase letter, N-A, 
goes together and the Cl go together. You can also see that on the periodic table. Na is sodium and Cl is chlorine. Let's try the next one. Mg, the subscript is 3. For N, the subscript is 2. Now I want you to take a second and work on the next two by yourself. So you're going to do this square and this square. You're going to identify the subscript of each compound below. All right, let's look at K3P. The subscript for K is 3. For P, I don't see 1, so that means it's just 1. On this bottom one, we have a much longer chemical formula. This is where counting the representation in a picture or diagram wouldn't be very efficient. We would be counting a lot of dots, a lot of circles. So we'll just use the subscript. C is 10. H, 16, N, 5, O, 13, and P, 3. All right, we're going to set that aside. That's part of what we'll glue here in a little bit. And go back to the big page right here. Get it all on the camera screen, sorry. All right, now we're gonna talk about another number called a coefficient. A coefficient is a number placed in front of the formula. Okay, so that means we're gonna have to multiply this number by all of the subscripts in the formula. So let's fill it in and then we'll look at an example. So this means you have to multiply this number by all of these subscripts in the formula. This is called a coefficient. This is a bigger number, it's not small like the subscript, and it's gonna go in front of the chemical formula. So here's an example. We're still looking at C5H12, but now we have six of them. So here we just had one. Imagine an invisible one. But if we take six of these and combine them, like right here, one, two, three, four, five, six, now we have six compounds, six pentanes, right? So we need to know how many carbon atoms are there and how many hydrogen atoms are there. Again, it's not gonna be very efficient if we count we would be counting all of the carbons in all six of these and then counting all of the hydrogens in all six of these, what we can do is just multiply. So for carbon, you have, you have five of them, but now we're multiplying by six. We have six times five. So there are 30 carbons. And for hydrogen, same thing. Six times 12 is 72. So the coefficient just means that we have this many molecules of pentane, or this many compounds, okay? So we're going to multiply. Here's a little bit more practice at the bottom of this foldable, of this piece right here. And so we're looking at a compound now that says Na2CO3. So, how many sodium atoms, the Na, well, let's look at the subscript, it's telling us two. How many carbon atoms, there's not a subscript on the C for carbon, so that means one. And then oxygen, there is a three. So, in this compound, we have two sodium atoms, one carbon atom, 
and three oxygen atoms. But it says now, if we put a coefficient in front of this, instead of just one molecule of Na2CO3, now we have two. So now how many are there? Well, for sodium, Na, we have to multiply. Two times two, there would be four. Same thing for carbon, we gotta multiply. Two times the invisible one is two. And then for oxygen, we're gonna multiply two times three, that is six. Okay. All right, we have another page that says more practice. It's a small little page. Now it says determine, there we go. Determine the number of each atom below. So there are some that have coefficients and there are some that don't. I'm gonna give you some time to do practice. You can pause the video if you need to, and then we'll go over the answers. But you're gonna identify for each of these four compounds how many atoms of each element are present there. All right, let's go over these. So first we have NaNO3. For this one, they've already identified which elements are there, but remember we would be looking at capital letters. There's one capital letter, two capital letter, three capital letters. That means we must have three elements in this compound, okay? One of them is sodium, Na, so we're gonna count. If there is not a coefficient, or excuse me, if there's not a subscript written, we know that it's just one. Then same thing for N, nitrogen, there's not a coefficient, or excuse me, a subscript written, so that's just one. And then for oxygen, the subscript is three. There was no coefficient here, so just like when there's no subscript, when there's no coefficient, it's one. All right, let's look at this. H2O we probably recognize as water, but we don't just have one molecule of water. We have six molecules of water. So for hydrogen, we have to multiply. Six times two is 12. And for oxygen, six times the invisible one there is six. Okay, now, Let's look at this one. Here's something that we've never seen before. We have these parentheses. So what this is saying is that NO3 is a compound in itself. Okay, that's one nitrogen and three oxygen atoms combined. We have two of those, okay, plus this SR. The two on the outside of the parentheses only goes to what's inside of it. It doesn't go to what's outside the parentheses. So for a second, if we just ignore the coefficient, okay, we would have one SR, we would have to multiply two times the one for the nitrogen and get two, and two times the three for the oxygen and get six. So without the coefficient there, just one molecule like this, we have one atom of the SR, two of the N, and six of the O. 
If you think about it mathematically, it's like the distributive property. You have to distribute the two to everything inside the parentheses. But we have a coefficient of two. We have two of these compounds. So now we just have to multiply everything by two. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. And two times six is 12. All right, the last one, no parentheses, we do have a coefficient and we have a couple of, of subscripts. One thing that's new though is if you look, the nitrogen shows up twice, okay? So the elements that we have here, we have N for nitrogen, H for hydrogen, and O for oxygen. So, if we start with our coefficient, we multiply. 4 times this nitrogen, which is a 1, is 4. Hydrogen is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Now we have another nitrogen, 4 times 1. So this, we're going to have to actually add these together. This has a total of 8 atoms of nitrogen. There's 4 here bonded with the hydrogen, and there's four here bonded with the oxygen. Oxygen four times three is 12. So sometimes in a chemical formula, an element can show up more than once. That all just depends on how it bonds with the atoms inside the compound. So some of the nitrogens are bonding with the hydrogen, some of the nitrogens are bonding with the oxygen. That's why it's written this way, but when we're counting, we need the total, and that's why we added it together here. Okay. One last page of practice. Here is showing it in like a visual form, a picture form. So first it says, determine the number of each atom. Well, we have a coefficient of five. It's like saying we have five of this compound. So, for Na, that's sodium, we see it twice, one, two, but there's five of them, so we multiply. Two times five is 10. For S, that's sulfur, I see one of them here, but we have that five times. One times five is five. And then for oxygen, we see one, two, three, four, but we have five of these. Four times five is 20. So when it says how many compounds are there, there are five compounds. That's what this coefficient number is representing. If this were written out into a chemical formula, it would look like Na2, because we said there were two here, SO4. So with the coefficient, it would look like that written as a chemical formula. Okay, so what we're going to do now is cut and glue all of this together. So these little pieces, you are going to need to cut them down a little bit more. It doesn't have to be perfect on the line. Don't cut off any of your writing. So these three, you're going to cut just a little bit smaller than they already are. And then on the big piece of paper, you're gonna cut out along the dotted lines. Zoom out here. And then I'll show you how to glue them together. Okay, if everybody's not done cutting, you can pause the video until you are done. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fold and how to glue for our final product. Um, on the solid line, you're gonna fold in on both sides, as well as the bottom. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it's just creating somewhere for us to glue something on the back side. Okay, so we kind of have it folding up now. This bottom piece on the back, we're gonna glue the one with the big five on it. Okay. So, you have a glue stick, 
try not to make a mess. And we're just going to glue the big five piece onto the bottom. Okay. Then on the subscript side, on the left side, we're going to do the one that we did first. It's the one that says, more practice, identify the subscripts in each compound below. That was our first practice. We hadn't learned about coefficients yet, so it's not the one with coefficients. Okay, so on the back of the left side, we have the more practice that says identify the subscripts in each compound below. And then the last piece that we're going to glue on is the other practice piece. This is the one that did have coefficients. Okay, so it'll look like that. When you're done gluing on the very back side, be sure that you put your name and then you can turn it into the box. This will get glued into your journal at a later time.